All right, so um, once again, thanks for letting me observe you and um, opening up your classroom and being mm -hmm. willing to go through this process yeah. with me. Um, so um, last time, so let's talk about your lesson first and then we'll okay. um, talk about it in light of what kind of your focus or your goals were um, last time we talked, because last time mm -hmm. you um, kind of had a focus and goal. So how do you feel like your lesson went um, this time? I think overall it went pretty well. Um, I think um, the kids responded well. I think they were engaged the whole time. I think any time I asked a question, you know, they were answering it. Um, I think it went pretty good. How would you compare it? What um, Did you see any improvements, um, things that compare it to maybe early on in this year when you first started? Uh, yeah, teaching. I would say I've definitely improved as a teacher, just growing a lot, um, just being thrown in the fire, you know, because mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to grow and learn is just when you're thrown into it. And so I would say I'm definitely a better teacher than I was August 23rd, Right. you know. Right. Um, and I can see that even in my questioning and everything like that. And so I'd say I've definitely improved. Good, good. And um, I saw, I mean, I see the same thing because you're, I mean, we've talked outside of just these these times that you have really um i mean you have that natural there's that natural flow a lot of it's rapport with students i mm -hmm. think is what as i think that is sometimes half the battle when you have yeah, that rapport with sure. students and again you have some pretty tough clientele yes. <laughs> um that rapport is everything mm -hmm. i mean i think it's almost more than 50 50 with you it's probably mm -hmm. and so i think that You've done a fabulous job with that. And from the first time I observed you to this time, I've saw, I've seen some great increase in what you're wanting, mm -hmm. the strategy. We mm -hmm. talked about the strategy of questioning, engaging students right. was where, because I think the first time when we, we talked about it, you know, that was a lot more. I wanted it to be less teacher-directed. Right. And um, I definitely saw less teacher-directed, mm -hmm. more student engagement. Um, we'll kind of go into that deeper, but I think I see – see growth in in that area so i see where you're you're and that may be just being more comfortable in the classroom maybe it's we're past the first nine weeks we don't have we can crack a yeah, smile I, occasionally yes it was more of a aggressive not aggressive but a um like i'm gonna make myself take the reins off a little bit and, mm -hmm. and see what the students can do in groups and, and things like that so. good so it was very it was, it was very intentional, intentional. Mm -hmm. yes um, and I imagine the beginning part is intentional as to um, creating an atmosphere of structure right. and all mm -hmm. of that. So um, so what are one of the highlights of that lesson? So if you think back of that lesson, so I know that was a, a week or so ago. If that was, so you, so what was one highlight? One thing I, for me personally, was the gallery walk, just because, mm -hmm. like I said, it was intentional for me to just kind of, that was the first time I've ever done that. So I've done okay. some group work and partner work. But for them to be on their own and they're standing up and they're walking around and they get to choose, you know, which station they want to go to or whatever. Like for me, it was a big deal to see those kids on task and working. So I was like, Good. awesome. Good. So I was, I was pleased with that. Yeah, because, I mean, I know sometimes I let loose right. and I'm like, oh, OK, we're going to bring it back in. Right. But so. um, and I think that speaks to the classroom behavior and management that you have, the rapport mm -hmm. you have with them. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean. Yeah, because we had talked about, I mean, previously, you letting go, letting the mm -hmm. engagement moving, like a slow release right. of that. And so this was kind of, you're saying this is the first time you, you've had that slow release? Right. Well, that was the first time I've done that kind of group okay. work. I've done group work before, but that was the first time where it's been them on their own. Like, they're up, they're moving, they're... And so I was kind of scared at first, and it worked throughout the whole day. I did the same lesson all day, mm -hmm. and so in every single one of my classes, it went smoothly, and I was like, wow, it's a miracle, so... Well, what do you think? What do you think attributed to that being successful? I think just their expectations being set. Like they know, they know what's expected of them in the classroom. They know, you know, there's consequences if they don't. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of them don't like to have meetings with me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm I'm always positive too at the same time. Right. So, yeah. um, do you feel that the students got what they what your objective was at doing what you? Yeah, I would say so. We so that was only our second day in talking about that topic and right. so I was still kind of shocked at how many of them were getting it and they remembered from what we talked about yesterday right. and so I was I was pleased with that good so um so if anything there may not be anything 
think back at what part, if anything, would you change or modify if you could redo that? So, uh, you know, just thinking about that, I was thinking of when I had two groups present, I was like, what would be another way I could get more groups involved in that? And mm -hmm. so I tried to, I said, you know, if you didn't work this problem, you're working it now. And if you did, you're going to see, you know, if they made mm -hmm. a mistake. But I was like, you know, maybe some one group that worked that problem could work it on the board and then another group could work that one on the board and just maybe get more kids involved in like the presenting process or mm -hmm. describing their work. Um, but that's the only thing I yeah. can think of off the top of my head. Um, I mean, and, and I, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of, I mean, have you tried or maybe thought about um, assigning like, maybe assigning each one of them a problem. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's working it, one right. on this board, one on this board, one on, you could do could something like that. that. Mm -hmm. And then just a quick rotate mm -hmm. of presenting and then all yeah. of them are standing up and about to. Right. That so would that, have been good too. That would have been another way. I mean, that's just something right. to engage. I was all just of thinking them. maybe I lost some people when they were presenting. Like maybe some kids were like, oh, I'm right up there, you know. Right. And so that's hard. That was hard for me to gauge. I was like, maybe I should have done something a little different, but. Um, what's, I mean, we could brainstorm. There's some reflective things that mm -hmm. we could do. Um, so good yeah thinking of whole group engagement mm -hmm. all right. the time right. yeah and that's where you're wanting to that's going to increase that student engagement going to increase the rigor mm -hmm. um, not giving them an excuse to not think at the moment right. not to work good um, well last time we met you mentioned your focus professional growth this year you wanted to incorporate higher order questioning mm -hmm. And that's that's still still where I'm you're still, wanting to yes, go. Yes, okay. I'm still. Um, so and you want to do that more consistently in your lessons to increase student engagement. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what your what your focus is. Um, and how do you feel that that is going on a kind of a daily basis? I thought yeah. So I've just I've been intentional with my questioning. Just not only asking a question, but then when they answer, okay, why is it like that? Mm -hmm. Instead of just stopping at you know. The question I asked because some of the kids are just trying to remember the algorithm. Okay, but why are we doing that? Why right. are we? And so I want them to see the big picture, not just well, this is what he said we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Good. And so that's why I'm here recently. I've been, and I, I know my kids are getting annoyed with it, but I'll ask a question and then they'll answer, and then I'm saying, okay, why? Or mm -hmm. you know, and so they're like, oh, are you serious? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, yeah. I'm um, and that's exactly um, what I, I I picked up on. I said mm -hmm. there was a var variety of why questions, mm -hmm. which is good because you're always having them defend right you're always having them mm -hmm. defend their answer mm -hmm. and what do you think the benefit to that is i just think you know it causes them to kind of see the big picture and think outside the box um just kind of like i said and not only that but other kids are listening and so maybe they didn't know why and this kid knows you mm -hmm. know and so maybe okay now they know because so and so answered it okay. and yeah. especially if i do it repeatedly you know they keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it so right yeah and I think I think you're right. I think that's and hearing it different ways because we teachers are going to teach it one way. We generally right. try to say it repetitively right. and in variety of ways, but we right. have the way that we understand. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right that that collaboration between them, they're they're um, products of social media, and that's where mm -hmm. they get a lot of mm -hmm. their their peer communication. They get a lot. You'll, of you'll see a kid, so you you know you ask them a question, and I answer, and then you'll say why, and then you start to see them kind of mm -hmm. like think like mm -hmm. they don't want to go that deep into it. Right. So, and, um, kind of yeah, why do you think that is? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm going to take a rabbit a little bit. I just, I just think they're confident in their answer, and then you ask them why, and they're, oh, no, i got to think again on the spot. And so, mm -hmm. I think. And, and that's hard, because for anyone, it's harder mm -hmm. digging deep. Right. And, um, but what I think we're doing is we're taking them from the recall mm -hmm. and actually the application right. or the, the justification, and you're seeing, like, the the pains of going up Bloom's taxonomy or right. increasing the rigor. And I think when you see that, you probably know you're breaching into a higher order thinking because mm -hmm. um, that, <laughs> that pain starts coming on their face. Yes. Um, so. so why, well, we kind of just answered this, why it's important for teachers to ask higher order thinking during a lesson. Just because, I mean, first of all, I think questioning drives your lesson. Um, <clears throat> If you're just up there lecturing all the time, the students aren't going to be engaged. So you got to get the class engaged mm -hmm. somehow. And I think questioning is a great way to do that. And it just causes them to think, every kid to think, and hold them accountable because they never know who you're going to call on. Or, right. And so they're having to sit there, uh, you know, and, and, and be actively engaged in it. Um, 
So I would say. Yeah. Would say do fine. you do you have an intentional strategy of how you? As you said, who you call on. Do you have an intentional strategy? What is your intentional strategy? Yeah, so, um, um, like, as far as, like, calling on kids when yes. asking a question. So, usually... To make sure it's not the same students engaging. Right, and so, usually what I'll do is, especially when I'm first opening up a lesson, you know, you can kind of tell who's engaged and who's... Mm -hmm. And so, there will be times when I'll ask a kid who I know is going to know the answer, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's also times when... Um, I'm like, well, I kind of need to see where other people are. So, I'll, you know, I'll call on them. And um, and I know I shouldn't do this all the time. But every now and then, if, you know, I see a kid with his head down, you know, I'll, hey, you know, what do you think the answer is? Just so they know, hey, mm -hmm. I better start paying attention. And it's not to pick on them. It's just, hey, I need your attention. I need you to, right, to re-engage them. And so there definitely is a strategy. Um, I would say sometimes, like, if I'm just asking really, you know, quick, just kind of going around, sometimes it's not necessarily – a strategy sometimes it's just kind of random mm -hmm. but everyone knows hey there's a chance i'm gonna get called on i need to right. i need to pay attention so yeah do you um do you feel like that or are most of the students at least once do you feel like you've touched on at least one student kind of verbally oh yeah for sure at least for sure there's one girl i'm still kind of scared to call in again because i've called her before and she was like no mm -hmm. she just straight told me i'm like i'm not doing that i'm not answering whatever mm -hmm. so i was like oh how do you think with her how do you think you can approach because obviously we want to make sure she's engaged yeah so and we, so what i do now is a lot of times like when i give them work to do or i say hey you work this problem i'll go around and she'll be one of the ones i walk up to and i'll ask her individually because mm -hmm. i didn't know if it was like a like a shy thing or you know whatever and so usually if i ask her individually she'll answer me it'll be kind of reluctant but she will and so right. i'll make an effort to do that okay. um so how have you been able to strengthen this practice? What intentional things are you doing as a teacher? Um, I mean, you, you said stating why are there, what are some things that you're doing or maybe could do to even go a little deeper with your, your question? So just uh, like pre-planning pre the questions. So going through my lesson, you know, what would be, or where would be a good time to ask, you know, like a DOK two question or mm -hmm. DOK three, and then like pre-planning that out. Okay, when I get here, I'm gonna ask this question. This would be good for them to answer, you know, or use it as a form of assessment or something right. like that. And so, um, have you tried that? Yeah, mm -hmm. you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How'd that work? How did that go? I think it went pretty well. Sometimes it's hard for me because then I'm sitting there in the back of my mind. Okay, I need to ask this. I need to ask this. Mm -hmm. And then I think that can throw me off other places. Right. And so a lot of times I do think I'm my best, though, when I'm just kind of just going. Mm -hmm. More so, organic. Yeah. yeah. And so. In my experience, I, I, I like I like to look at those prior to the lesson. So they're kind of in the, the back, getting those DOK, kind of have the pre-planned. Mm -hmm. um, I know you, you don't necessarily use um, PowerPoint or anything. You use the, the document camera. Sometimes you can have... Like, I've also, if I know I'm going to be intentional about them and I know this is where I want to ask this question, I will build that into my, mm -hmm. actually, right. a written piece right. so I don't forget it right. or I don't leave it out. Yeah, because there are so, times, like, in a lesson where maybe I've asked it third period and then I forgot sixth period and then I'll get to seventh right. and ask it. I'm like, dang it, I forgot to ask it right. sixth period. But. So maybe um, building it actually into, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll build it into my Google Slides. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll b actually put a Google slide that says group talk, um, right. table talk, this, or what if this, and then I will have a practice problem oh. or whatever the example problem underneath. So I know you do um, a good job of keeping them in their journals and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So um, that's just a, something that I've, I've used before maybe as a, okay. a thought of actually writing it maybe at the top of your, and actually having the students write it. Mm -hmm. And um, that way, at least they're thinking of it in that moment. So putting it, rather than just have it sitting like in a, on a post-it, I've seen people have the post-its or they'll take the mm -hmm. cards and send them over to the side. Right. And um, you don't have to do that on every question. But if you're, if you're wanting, okay, I want to make sure I go a little bit deeper here, mm -hmm. build that, maybe build that into, yeah. into something. Um. So as students, how, did, how have students responded to um, you going deeper? Uh, you, you, I think they're definitely stepping up to do the to the plate on it. They're, um, 
most of them, you know, are answering pretty thoroughly and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them are still very eager to answer. And so like, if I'll ask like a generic question, some of my classes, you'll see 20 hands go up okay. and then some of them you'll see two. Right. And so it's, it's definitely a mixture of them, but I think for the most part, the kids are responding pretty well to it. Good. Um, and it seems like, or what would you say that there are the same kids answering all the time or are more... How has the change in your best practice, your your um, questioning strategy, is that increasing? Do you see an increase? Yeah, so student? I've had, so starting off, uh, you know, in a lot of my classes, it was like the same three kids. Mm -hmm. And so eventually what I do is I'll let them answer a question. Okay, you can't talk anymore. And then, okay, you can't talk anymore. And then right. that forces other people to talk. And so I've been doing that here recently yeah. too, especially some kids in my eighth period who, which was the class you observed. Mm -hmm. There's one, and I think he was actually absent um, during this, but he's one to answer everything just any type of right. question and so after your answers one I said okay you can't talk anymore right so then other people have to yeah and that's that's a good a good strategy you're acknowledging him mm -hmm. giving him validity right um, and I'll tell him you know I wanted to say you can you know great job but mm -hmm. I want to hear from someone else and so right let's see see if you're um I always say share the thinking let's share mm -hmm. the thinking, share the thinking. A, little, mm -hmm. a little bit because everyone's thinking but let's share and not everybody share. thinks as fast as him and so we need to give right. other people time um and sometimes I'll say, don't steal, because they want to butt, butt in. Don't steal anybody else's thinking. I think that's where, and I saw this as well as in your evidence, that your wait time has got, mm. is really improved. Because part of that high order questioning is you've got to make right. sure the wait Give time is there. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to require them to think more, mm. I think you're going to have to wait more. Right. And that's hard for me because I'm a go, go, go person. Like I talk fast. I, you know, I do everything like full speed. And so it's hard for me to sit there. You know, just kind of, just kind of waiting. It's kind of awkward a little bit. Right. So, uh, I, I do need to improve my wait time, I think. But I saw improvement, mm. improvement already. Mm. Um, awesome. from the first time I observed to the, so mm. I see that's something you're working awesome. on. But I, I, I think I, I agree with you that the more that this is going to be a focus of mm. yours, and I mean, I see you moving more towards that. Um, being intentional about that wait time, because. You are going to have those slower, and you're going to ha be asking more work out of them, right. thinking wise. Mm. And they aren't always; they're ready for the recall. And if yeah, um, here is one strategy that I've used: if they do not have to have wait time, I'm probably on a lower DOK mm. level. So mm. if they're able to answer pretty quickly, they're recalling. You're not asking the right questions, right? You're not. You're maybe not asking the right questions, mm -hmm. right? Or you're not asking them at a higher level. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're finding that you're having to wait more, you can kind of take that as a Probably point on the back. Thing. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, I, that's what I, because you're requiring them to think. Thinking is, doesn't happen that fast, mm -hmm. especially the higher up you go. Right. Um, so that's a, a, something you're going to have to be aware of that, oh, don't take it as, if you're starting to ask the right questions, it's going to seem like they don't know as much. Right. Um, you do have to have that. Okay. Um, right. It's okay. Right. And that is okay. Um, because you're, you're growing where you're wanting to grow. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, from here, how do you plan, plan on, um, your questionings and your opportunities? What is, what is your next steps? What do you, what do you think you want to do I think from here on out? Kind of continuing to go in the direction I'm going, just try to improve on it. Mm -hmm. Just again, just be even more intentional than I've been. Um, kind of, I know it's not necessarily possible. Kind of treat every lesson like it's your T test. You know, if every mm -hmm. teacher did that, can you imagine? You know how right. how how much our students would learn it. I know it's hard and it takes a lot of time, but just trying to put more preparation into my lessons, I would say. Yeah. Um, it's hard with coaching, you know, but you, I'm, 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 I think I'm balancing it pretty well. So. I, I would agree. Um, I don't think you're sticking to that coach stigma. Right. So I, um, I would congratulate you on that. Thank you. That you yeah. are, um, you're falling outside of the, oh, I have a coach. That's just a coach. Right. So, um, and you're willing to work. And I think that's, what's important that, um, you're, you're willing yeah. to grow and you're looking for improvement and you're being intentional. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the biggest things you just you hit it is just intentionality, mm -hmm. and because and I mean I fall into this we kind of get us as veteran teachers 
or you've done it for a while, and so it's easy. It's you. I just get in a, a rut or a mm-hmm. routine, and I'm not as intentional where I can be sometimes. Right. And so I think um, you're right. Being intentional, intentional is the is the key. And if mm-hmm. we treat it every day like a test yeah. or um, an observation, right. um, which is crazy because we're being observed by students all every the time. day. Right. The ones who really count. Mm-hmm. And so um, that's a that's a good. I need that's that's growing me. I appreciate that because I need to I need to think like that as well, um, which does take work yes, yeah. and a lot of time and intentionality, which mm-hmm. we all don't have a lot sometimes of. Um, so how are questions leveled? How do you um, during 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 the lesson? Is there a flow that you have that you um, increase? Yeah, I think it it, it also just kind of depends on. You know what you're talking about like you know i think like right now we're doing adding and subtracting polynomials mm-hmm. and so there's not a whole lot of like critical thinking right. going on there because you know well one they've been adding and subtracting since you know mm-hmm. third grade and combining like terms okay you know i'll ask them mm-hmm. what you know it means to combine like terms but i feel like after you know like a, a few whys and stuff like that there's not a whole lot farther you could take it i would say Right. Um, and so that's something I've been kind of struggling with <clears throat> here is, okay, you know, what else can I ask them? How else can I right. present this or have them think about it? But um, Well, and sometimes when I get to that stage, then I switch it on them and I start with an answer and have them create mm-hmm. the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, so if this were the final product, which you're going to have multiple things, but right. if this was the final, like let's say addition, so this is your final x squared plus 2x equals 3, or, or plus three, I mean, it's an expression. So if this is your answer, what would have been the problem? How'd you get here, Brad? How'd you, mm-hmm. you create the problem that it would have got, mm-hmm. that answer. So reversing it on them sometimes, mm-hmm. when they can do the forward process, um, I know I've used, yeah, just reversing it, say, okay, mm-hmm. here's the answer. Now, what's what good. would have got us mm-hmm. here? What was the problem? So then they can do forward and backwards. You've also... You've increased that. You've went to create pretty quickly mm-hmm. um, on a very simple topic, not right. creating, and that's not much work on you. Right. Mm. I mean, you can make up one and say, what would have got right. me here? How do I get here? Yeah. Mm. That's good. So you can do that in just about anything that's rote, um, kind of a rote process, which mm. a lot of yours is just a very rote right. process because it's a, it's a, in between it's a it's a bridge class mm-hmm. if you will and so like i mean trevor i mean we talked about trevor mm-hmm. trevor bradshaw who's, why is he in this class mm-hmm. why is he in this class right. makes 100 on everything so trevor trevor may be one that you're looking for those things of right. i'm not going to give you problems i'm going to give you answers in here mm-hmm. so um let him create the problem yeah. for the next day's class. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that he, does, type. he does get it. Um, um, so what are some strategies you um, use to provoke the discussion between students? Like, because I think, what are some ways, because you've done more me asking questions for mm-hmm. students. How, because eventually you want students to ask questions right. of students. Student led. Mm-hmm. Right. Since that's where we, we want to go to student um, right. student ownership. So how, what's some, what are some strategies you want to maybe start incorporating or have you thought about provoking the discussion well, within? Just kind of like I said with the gallery walk, like sitting back and, you know, I was going and helping groups, but when I was sitting back and like watching, you know, I was hearing students asking questions. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't, shouldn't this be like this? And, you know, and so that was cool to me to see that, hey, even if I'm not saying, hey, you better ask your partner questions, right. you know, and, and help them out. They were doing it already on their own. Right. And so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, so I guess it's trying to create an environment where, um, like activities that promote that. And so it, that means I've got to start giving more partner oriented mm-hmm. activities or cooperative activities instead of just me doing it. Cause I think, you know, in a sense, anytime you're given that, they'll start to catch on and do it on their own, mm-hmm. especially if they're on task Good. and engaged. So. Yeah. And yeah, cause I think. You you've built structure, you've modeled, mm. and I think you're I think you're you were I mean you sh- it showed your students were ready for mm. the and you want them to mimic you because you want right. them asking each other well why mm-hmm. well why 
and well, how did you get that? How could we do this differently? You want them saying those questions. I've got students. I, I walk in sometimes in my third period now. Oh, we better start our warm up because I thought Monday starts warm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they'll do that when I walk in sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's kind of fun. Yeah. But, but they start mimic yeah, and they start, do they uh, mimic you because i say it every day it's just something you mm -hmm. better start to warm better start doing that so every time i'm like guys better start to warm up and when this one guy's trying to be funny oh yeah so yeah I'm like, mine is tell them go ahead my mine is like cell phones mm -hmm. out of sight out of mind so they'll mm -hmm. see them like out of sight out of mind yeah um or the expectation is that's why i normally i walk in and say the expectation in my classroom is that you're working on your your warm-ups mm -hmm. as you walk in and so i'll walk in if somebody's in, the expectation is yeah <laughs> like, there you go. But it's the, I mean, and that's what it is. We've set expectations, right. and they're very, they know them. Mm -hmm. And when I have a sub and that's not the expectation, they they right. know that. Right. And, um, but that means you've you've done, you've set that structure, which is going to help in the long run, mm -hmm. which is allowing you to grow as a teacher. Because if you still are dealing with a classroom management piece, it's hard to start building your best practices. Mm -hmm. So. Right. As I talked before, that's where you should be. Com I mean, that is definitely where you're commended. You've got that structure, so you can grow as a teacher. Right. Um, so a couple of recommendations that I um, have to keep growing you and moving you towards um, kind of that um, where that best practice incorporating that um, math wise. Mr. Brinton, of course, I thought you would relate well with him. Mr. Brinton and Miss Mayo both do. They do um, more questioning they they're very much you're on the same style as you and mr Britton does the the question question and question and so i thought do you have time it would be a really good thing just to go observe and visit him. observe him and visit i know he talked to you um about kind of joining us in working with mm -hmm. the algebra one retesters because mm -hmm. a lot of your students already right um but he he does more of um, what appears to be direct teach but it's very high questioning and engaging students mm -hmm. in through questioning. So if you ever get a chance, um, I mean, I'd probably prearrange it with him so you weren't. Right. Um, and I, I, I'll let him know that we've had this discussion, but I think that would mm -hmm. be, and that you're wanting to see more of the questioning style. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's one that you might relate to and be able to pick up a, yeah. more of a veteran teacher, how he's done it. Um, and then maybe start incorporating, be more intentional about maybe picking one and writing, having them write in their journals or mm -hmm. things like that. I'm um, using the DOK leveled question stems. Um, I think those are, those are great resources. You start realizing where your levels, are, where your questions are when you start looking through those. Right. Yes. Um, you're like, Oh, I asked a lot of calculator. I ask mm -hmm. a lot of what is versus mm -hmm. how did you do this? Mm -hmm. Or, but I think your DOK, your why you're moving up then you can move up to that create because right. you can do DOK, you can do the balloon, the balloons. There's lots of ways to do that. But once you can start getting used to, and then you can start differentiating, say, okay, Trevor, you here's the answer. How did we get there? Um, mm -hmm. So I went, Peyton, here's this. Can you work this for me right. and defend your steps? And I think those are those are two strategies that will, will definitely I think if you keep working, I think you're on the right track, moving more towards the group, giving student collaboration opportunities mm -hmm. and, and listening for them mimic. Right. And I think you did a great job when you walked around because you started in a, just joining their pairs and asking those mm -hmm. why. I heard you say things like, well, why did you box these, box these two and put squares around mm -hmm. these two? And they're having to defend. Why you did it? <clears throat> and mm -hmm. their partner is helping them defend and helping mm -hmm. them. So before long, their partner is going to be asking when they're not understanding, why did you do that? Mm. And so I think you're you're doing a great job in that. So how can I further um, support you in strengthening um, uh, either I, this best practice or if you're ready to? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, you've helped me a lot. Just give me the cards and, you know, giving me instructional resources and things like that. So um, just continue to do that, I guess. Yeah. yeah so you've and been maybe a big help to me. Yeah, maybe move on towards um, looking for more collaboration right. opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, because um, I know you do a lot of collaboration, yeah. as you can see in your room. Yeah. But, so, no. um, and that's a culture you do have to slowly build. Mm -hmm. You can't right. go straight just from. Them into yeah, you can't because the classroom management will go. Right. It's a completely um, different dynamic. Mm -hmm. and so. Um, all right. Well. Again, thanks. And do you have any other questions or anything for me? No. All righty. So, sure. There we go.